principal of the premier middle school in the state of Delaware, H.B. DuPont. Uh, we are so excited to have you join us here today, uh, which is going to be a fantastic ceremony to honor our 2020 class. Um, before we get going, students, I want you to know, while I cannot see right now, in my mind, I'm seeing all of your smiling faces as we honor your tremendous accomplishments, and I'm so excited for you today. Before we begin, can you please stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I would like to thank everyone who's joining us, all the moms, the dads, all the aunts, all the uncles, all the grandparents, all the brothers, all the sisters, all the cousins, as we honor this tremendous class. Now, grandparents, before we get going, your grandchild might have told you, hey, you know our principal really looks like Chicken Little. And guess what? Right now, you might be like saying, hey, this guy doesn't look that much like Chicken Little. Well, guess what? If I put my glasses on, I do. I'm wearing my contacts today because, you know, when you're wearing the mask, the glasses, it gets a little foggy up there, I can't see, and I want to make sure I know that I'm looking at all of our amazing 2020 eighth grade graduates. To our eighth grade, we have so many fond memories of you and your accomplishments here at HP. Your teachers have shared so many wonderful memories with us. First, they said, this class loved to complain about no snow and no snow days, right? We didn't get a drop this whole winter. But boy, did we ever have a little something in store for you on March 13th for anybody who's looking to avoid school, huh? Wow. Also, this class loved to have early morning dance parties in front of Mrs. Keyport's and Mr. Bruno's room. They said this group could truly get down. Mr. Bruno even said he thinks there might be the next Charlie D'Amelio who comes out of here. Mrs. Keyport said if anybody makes it that big, she would even join TikTok. The teachers also said you could smell this group coming from a mile away. This group loved perfume, they loved cologne, loved to make sure their hair looked great, loved to get the lip gloss on. They said right before lunch, when everybody went on down, it looked like uh, you could see the counter at Macy's. That's how good everybody smelled before they headed down to lunch. I want you to know that your class was absolutely the winner for the most eighth grade administrators in the history of HDB DuPont. You had Ms. Fisher, you had Ms. She got a new big job, you had Mrs. Mallon, she had a baby. Mr. Furrow helped us, Ms. Clifton helped us. We had the whole crew going the whole time, right? So without a doubt, you definitely set the world record for eighth grade administrators at HP. I also want you to know uh, one of my fondest memories of this class is that first sixth grade year at the Fall Fest. Throwing pumpkins, right, running around. You all were so young, so cute, so innocent. Now, you can barely fit through the doors because you're so tall, right? That's always one of my favorite memories of this class. Also, this class will always be known as the one that won five out of six championships, possibly during the school year, right? Girls volleyball, co-ed soccer, we lost a tough overtime one in field hockey, wrestling champs, boys basketball champs, girls basketball champs. And please, believe me, everyone knows we, have dom we would have dominated softball, we would have dominated baseball, we would have dominated girls across, boys across, boys volleyball, and track and field. Also, I still, my heart breaks to think that we didn't get a chance to watch that play. You all had worked so hard on that. Also, I know that we were absolutely gonna take back that championship in Science Olympiad. We were gonna beat Independence in eighth grade math league. We were gonna dominate in nationals and TSA and BPA. And unfortunately, that all was taken from us. But we know what we would have done, and we know your greatness. We know that you're all going on to so many outstanding high schools we will continue to set the bar higher and higher for our current HP Warriors. You also will be the last class that ever gets to say, 
you had Miss You Felt for all three years. Definitely special. At this time, I would like to turn it over to someone who has been with you through thick and thin. Someone who can tell a story about every one of you right now, knows your strengths, knows your weaknesses. The incomparable Miss Big Thank you, Mr. Bacinelli. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so when Mr. Bacinelli asked me to give a speech for eighth grade graduation, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous. I thought, how do you give a speech to an empty gymnasium? <laughs> Uh, so thankfully, your eighth grade teachers were there for me. They said, hey, don't worry about it. It's fine. You got this. Just pretend like you're teaching a Zoom class to eighth grade. <laughs> and this is the point at which the one person who shows up for the Zoom class will give me a little chuckle just so I know I'm not alone. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Bachelet. It's good. Uh, so congratulations to the class of 2020. You guys made it. You survived middle school. And I imagine that it really does feel like surviving middle school, right? Because you have literally survived the pandemic. Um, but you know, it, it's no understatement. I mean, middle school can be brutal. Um, middle school is this incredibly awkward yet simultaneously fantastic time in your lives that is defined by exploration. You are trying to figure out who you are, who you want to be, and what you want to do with this one precious life that you Oh, and also puberty. Who could forget puberty? Uh, and for all of you that were lucky enough to have Miss King's health class, you'll definitely always have those puberty videos to look back on and reminisce. Um, but speaking of reminiscing, uh, we've all had a lot of time to do that lately. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about this class. As Mr. Bacinelli said, I've been with you since the sixth grade. That's a, that's a long time. And um, I can honestly say that I know many of you very well. I think back to those first few days. You were so shy, so timid, so tiny, some of you. Um, and yes, even the loudest of you, Sadea Lily, were shy and timid on those first few days. Um, but really, some of you, some of you came in super savvy already, sizing up the competition, who would be your friend and who would be your foe. And, and others of you, literally clueless, just, pirouettes in the lunch line, not a care or a clue who is watching. Um, and, and you've all come a very long way since that day. Some of you have changed a lot. Some of you have remained very stable, but you've all turned into really wonderful human beings. And I feel really honored to be able to be a witness to that. Whew, I'm gonna miss you guys a lot. It's not ideal to have a move up ceremony in the middle of a pandemic like it's not ideal to lose the last quarter of your eighth grade year and miss out on all those experiences that you would have had. And it's really hard to write a speech about living through a quarantine when you know that the experiences of that quarantine are so vastly different for everyone. So I'm not gonna to try to speak to everyone's experience, but I will leave you with this. My hope is that when we come back from this quarantine, we have learned to take to, to appreciate the comfort that we find in one another and to not ever take that for granted. My hope is that because of this pandemic, we will learn to love one another and to be there for one another. I hope we appreciate the value that each person brings to the room because each and every one of you has something precious to offer. And even if you don't know what that is yet, that's okay. I'll be honest, I had no clue when I was your age. So maybe if you're one of those people that's kind of searching for your thing, just follow some of this advice, and I know that you'll find your way. Number one, always value people and experiences over things. Number two, be kinder than necessary, because you never know what someone else is going through. Number three, give more than you have and take less than you need. And last but not least, Remember, you don't always get to choose what happens to you, but you always get to choose how you react and respond to it. And that is a powerful thing. So, as you go out into the world, as the class of 2020, remember, use your superpowers for good. Good luck and congratulations, class of 2020. I love you and I will miss you.
All right, next stop, we told you we were gonna have a special guest speaker, and boy do we ever, uh, someone that means so much to you guys, someone that means so much to us. Uh, if I could, I would give her the biggest hug on behalf of everyone to show her how much we love her, Miss Fisher. So hello everyone. I'm so excited to be able to come back and speak to my eighth graders, to my babies, to my scholars. I am so proud of you. I remember you coming in as sixth graders, not having a clue what was going on, asking questions, not knowing where your class was, completely confused. And I have watched you grow and mature expeditiously. I have watched you develop and learn things. And I'm so proud of who you are as not only students, but as individuals. Um, I can just speak to, I know we have plenty of times from the times we're meeting in my office, um, some of our students having our crying sessions, talking it out, um, sitting down at lunch, countdown, three, two, one, or you're going to sit with period one. So you remember all of those different experiences, but what can I say? You guys were an awesome class. As you know, when I left, it was very difficult. Um, and so I think of you guys constantly and all the time. I check in with some of you through Zoom, through phone calls with Ms. Brown, with Mr. Lyons. Um, they let me know how you guys are doing. So this is what I want you guys to remember. You've made it this far. I was afforded the opportunity to see all the great high schools that you guys are getting to go to. From Howard to Hotton, to a charter school in Wilmington, to MOT, to DMA to some of the schools within the district, uh, the John Dickinson School, AI DuPont High School, um, St. Mark's. There's a lot of different schools that you guys accept, got accepted to, and I looked at every single last one of them, and I remember having those conversations of, Miss Fisher, where do I go? What do I do? How do I know what to decide? And we sit down and we make lists and talk about what are the right things to do and what is the best decision for you. To see that come into place, to see that you guys got to the schools that you want to, again, I'm extremely proud of you guys. Um, I can remember from running down the hallway saying, nope, turn around and go back. We're going to walk and we're going to try again. From coming down on lunch and saying, everybody stop, turn around, we're going to go back, we're going to rock and try again. But then to watch you develop as eighth graders to be able to come down to be mature, to watch you correct our sixth grader, really show them the HB warrior way of doing things. That was a proud moment for me because that tells me that everything that you were taught from the administration, from Ms. Brown, from your teachers, you took that and you really took ownership of the school and was really proud to be an HB DuPont warrior. Now you're done. You are the class of 2020, the graduating class of 2020. Please remember all the things that you learned at HB DuPont, the warrior way to be second to none, better than the rest, to always hold high standards for yourself, to know that you, you guys know each individually. I've always seen you guys are number one um, for all your own individual region. Never, ne never change that. Never take that for granted, okay? So I can't wait to hear more about what you guys are doing in high school. Um, I know some of you have my email. You've been emailing me constantly, Madison Adams, um, Mia Keen, Cecily, uh, Cecilia Spar, CC. Um, but I do know, I do appreciate that contact because all you want to know, me to know, is that Ms. Fisher, this is what I've done and I hope you're proud of me. And I am proud of each and every one of you. So I thank Mr. Bacinelli and the administration for allowing me to come back and talk to you guys and being a part of this special moment because it meant a lot to me. Keeping it together, Ms. Fisher's keeping it together, she promised. Um, so again, please know that the administration here Myself, the teachers, the school counselors will always be here for you. We're just an email, a phone call away. Please reach out. We are going to follow you to make sure that you continue to do well and be successful. You know my standard, it never changed. So I want you to continue to aim higher and do the best that you can and be the best version of yourself. So miss you guys, love you guys more than words can ever say. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life, a part of your education, um, and hopefully you continue to do that. Thank you. All right, so a couple things. Uh, one, I want to thank all of our HP teachers. Uh, they have shaped such a magnificent experience for all of you. Uh, they truly go above and beyond, and that has such a big reason why we have so much success. I want to thank all of our eighth grade and exploratory teachers for all the support that they gave you throughout the year, all the support that they've given you cyberly, right? A whole different kind of support. Uh, and just the way that they followed through to help you achieve your dreams and goals. I would like to thank Mr. Lyons and Mr. Robinson 
our two wonderful assistant principals for all the great things that they did for us this year. I, of course, would like to thank Ms. Fisher and Mrs. Mallon for all the guidance that they have provided you. And of course, Ms. Brown, who has been there with you every step of the way. All right? As soon as I'm done the speech, we're going to send you a video, old school messenger, to kind of celebrate your times here at HB. So when I'm done, please make sure you watch that. So here's my last message. Here's my last message to the class of 2020. I challenge you to be like my great uncle Danny. Now, what does that mean? My great uncle Danny is currently 88 years old. He was born into poverty in Bethlehem. He was a twin. His twin sister went on to live a life in Massachusetts as she grew up. He chose a life of service. As he got older, he decided he wanted to become a priest. And eventually he moved to New Orleans. He helped out tons of homeless people. He helped out many in need. He helped out people who were in great despair due to the profession that he chose. Right now, my Uncle Danny, he's getting better every day, but he is currently in a Baltimore hospital fighting COVID-19. So he was in a uh, house for retired clergy. And as you guys are probably well aware, you know, the nursing homes and those type of facilities have been affected the most by this terrible pandemic. So I want you to know, it breaks my heart to think about him by himself, right? No one allowed around him. No one given the opportunity to come and visit him due to the virus, right? The challenges it provides. It breaks my heart to think about you guys. It breaks my heart to think about the fact that we didn't get to have that eighth grade pool party. It breaks my heart to think about the fact that we didn't get to go on that trip to Hershey. It breaks my heart to think that we're not right now at the Blue Coat Stadium, the first middle school class ever to graduate there, right? But then you know what? I think more about my great uncle Danny. And I think about the life that he has lived. And I think about how much he means to me and how much he means to so many other people out there. And I challenge you. I challenge you to be that person that always opens the door for someone. I challenge you in high school, if someone drops their books, to help pick them up, right? Never have a concern about what anyone else says. I challenge you, I challenge you to be the generation that accepts everyone, no matter what color of their skin, no matter what religion they are, no matter what gender they are. I challenge you to be that group that truly transforms this country and this world into a better place. I challenge you to write handwritten letters. I still have this one from my great uncle Danny from June 11, 2010, almost 10 years ago, but it means that much to me, right? Does any direct message you send on Instagram mean that much or any snap? Be that person to write someone a handwritten letter. I know you can do it. I challenge you to be the best version of yourself and I challenge you to change the world. I want you to know that while you all are graduating, we will always be there for you. I want you to know that while you are graduating from HB, you will have much bigger and better things in front of you. I want you to know that if you right, can overcome this pandemic and all the challenges it, prevent, it pres I'm sorry, presents, you can accomplish anything. I challenge you to change the world. I want you to know that you will always be warrior strong. We are so proud of you and everything that you accomplished. HP class of 2020, I want to say I love you. Goodbye. I wish you luck. But we will always be in touch. At this point, please, uh, families, please check your school messenger as we're going to send out that video right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Thank you, Ms. Brown. See you guys.